It takes all the different isotopes and it averages them. So what I did on this chart was just to show the 100% abundances of these elements here that are in between the magic numbers. It doesn't show a timer or, I know, and it would be nice if it had an audio level so you could make sure it's recording audio. <laughs> okay. Take care. So the chart of the nuclides. What we're showing here are the magic numbers. Protons to neutrons, okay? Two protons, two neutrons creates our alpha particle. Let's get over here and look at it. Backwards, everything's backwards again. Hydrogen fused in the sun to make neutron. Two of those deuteriums come together. You got an alpha particle. Doubly magic. Two protons, two neutrons. Alphas. 99.9999% of the protons that go on to make helium are going to be in the alpha state. Triple alpha process again. Hans Bethe came up with Three heliums making a carbon-12. Hit it with another oxygen, doubly magic. Eight protons, eight neutrons. Oxygen-16. Isn't it ironic when we go back and look at our life essential elements? Oxygen was right there with the carbon-nitrogen oxygen. Four alpha particles. This is what I want to show. In between your next doubly magic, which is the 2020, 20, 20 protons, 20 neutrons, calcium 40. The calcium 40 has another calcium 46. It's still got the 20 magic number. 26 apparently can be considered a magic number also. So the calcium has two predominantly stable doubly magic nuclei, the 2020 and the 2026. But look in between, from calcium with the 20 protons to oxygen with the eight, we have 12 proton differences in here, okay? Now if you looked at the real chart of the nuclides that had everything in it, you would see other isotopes. Oxygen will have a 16 and a 17, carbon will have a 13 and a 14, but what these elements here have are 100% isotopic abundances, they call it. So after neon, when you look at sodium, all the sodium atoms that you find in the universe, sodium-23, 23, 23 protons, is going to have 12, it's got 11 protons, 12 neutrons, see? I start counting the numbers. I flipped around backwards here. I have to edit some of that out here. What is going on? This thing's backwards. Excuse me a moment. Okay, we're back. Have to edit all that, okay? After oxygen, you hit another alpha particle, you've got neon. Neon. Fluorine 19, sodium 23, aluminum 27, phosphorus 31. 100% of the atoms that you find will only have these isotopic abundances. Fluorine, again, I'm going by total mass instead of the proton. See, I don't even think in terms of proton anymore. Fluorine has an atomic number, that's the number of protons, of nine. Nine is an odd number, right? Well, put an even number of neutrons, 10 and 9 is 19. Odd number again. Fluorine, all the fluorine atoms that you find in the universe... 19 isotopes. Now that doesn't mean there aren't other ones that were made, but they decay. They're not stable. 
For some reason, as we see like with the magic numbers, eight and eight for the oxygen, two and two for the alpha particle, 20 protons for the calciums. There's just something that's called symmetry. There's pairs, something about pairs, man and woman, up and down, true, false. Pairs seem to be what exists in the universe, matter, antimatter. The quark theory ran up against a lot of resistance because Murray Gell-Mann predicted fractional electromagnetic charges. Negative one-third for the down quark plus two-thirds for the up quark? That was unheard of. It's either a plus or a minus. There weren't fractional electromagnetic charges. Well, it turns out he was right. And that takes an intuitive mind and a persistent mind, which I guess he was famous for. But still, if you come up with a theory, you got to stick your guns on it. The chart of the nuclides again, though. This is what I find fascinating, is looking at these trends. Fluorine, 19. 19 is the mass. Sodium, 23. These are exactly an alpha particle apart. Two protons, two neutrons. Add four to 19, what do you get? 23. Now, these may have been formed from alpha decay going down. Say these things, bigger elements or atoms were made, and once they hit this, they started decaying. Phosphorus, 31. Mass of 31. The proton count on that is a 15. So again, 15 minus 2, 13. That's aluminum. Aluminum, 27. That's the mass. So when you look here, we'll... I have to zoom in a little bit here, okay? We'll actually zoom back up just a flash to get that fluorine in there, okay? These trends, I find it fascinating. This is something that isn't explained when they look at the chart. I don't know why not, because they're exactly an alpha particle apart, okay? 31 mass, 27 mass. 23 mass, 19 mass. These are odd numbers. Is that a coincidence? It's the only odd numbers of protons. Now, when you see the elements in between, like the neon, there's a neon with a 10 neutron count. There's a neon with a 12 neutron count. Those are the two predominant ones, but there's also one with 11 in there. There's other elements that we could look at later, but this table is just to show these trends. And the alpha particle, when we were talking about how stable alpha particles are, we'll now look at the alpha decay. I think this would happen more probably from a decay than an alpha process of building it, but I don't know. Because there is, to start an alpha process with a nucleus of nine protons, if you went down with seven, who knows? But again, I'm just showing trends here. This is in between the two doubly magic numbers from the oxygen to the calcium. Let's see what we have next here. This isn't going to let me zoom in very good here. There's my zoom tool. This is not the one I want. Ribosis. We'll get back to that in a minute. I'm missing some of my chart of the nuclides here. We've got, uh, open my sky map, we'll look at that later. We need the chart. Starkle, that's another Starkle. I think this Starkle has two. Yeah, it is. We've got to go from calcium. That's 10. Oh, wait, where's my calcium? Calcium, here we go. Open up, full screen. Again, this is where I'm going to show the trends in this table. Let's 
chart or the new product. So we'll leave this together. If you remember how the gap between oxygen 